Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jim Lopes. I'm Visitor Services Supervisor here at Fall River Heritage State Park. Uh, today, we present one of our lunch meet lectures. Um, we're very lucky today to have as our guest uh, Taylor Silver from the Fall River Public Library, the reference librarian there, who's going to help you out today on your family quest. How do you how do you search for your family roots in Fall River? Uh, I don't know how many of you have done this. How many of you started doing this? But Fall River. But uh, Taylor provides a whole wealth of um, information about how to get started, uh, what's available locally. This is the second in our series of lunch meet uh, lectures this summer. Uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a, a special program on the Brookeshawn River. Everybody loves the Brookeshawn River. And we'll have Al Lima here. Al Lima and Dave Jennings from the Lafayette Derby House to talk about the Brookeshawn River. We're also having Chris McDonald from the Lafayette Derby House to talk about the Battle of Fall River. People forget about the Battle of Fall River and the Revolutionary War. Chris doesn't forget, and Chris will tell you. Last time we had Chris here, we had a full house. But that's, that's a good program. We have all kinds of other good programs here. We have uh, free movies for families every Wednesday night out in the meadow. Bring a picnic lunch, watch a movie under the stars. That's good. And we have, uh, before every movie, we have cookies and classes for kids. Uh, last week, we made pizzas. And <laughs> Uh, we've got s'mores coming up, lots of other good stuff. So that's every Wednesday at 6.30. We also have free lunches for forward for children under age 18. Lots of good stuff. Uh, this Saturday, we were uh, we have an exhibit opening uh, uh, through, your, through our eyes. It's forward uh, immigrants and the foods they make. So our, our theme this, this summer is uh, trans transformations and transition people and cultures of forward. And so, this, this program today fits in perfectly with that theme, how do you research your family history? And uh, last time we had Taylor here, uh, we were all very, very happy, very impressed with all the information he gave us. So today it is my pleasure to welcome Taylor Silver. Thank you, Jim. So like Jim uh, introduced me, my name is uh, Taylor and I work at the Fall River Public Library where I am the uh, head of reference services, supervisor of reference services, reference librarian, whatever my uh, title is called that day, that's what I am. My contact info is on the bottom there, 508-324-2700, extension 3 for the reference room and my email is right there, tsilva at salesinc.org if you need to or want to uh, get in touch with me. So where we start is who, kind of show of hands, who has done genealogy or is doing it now or has done it in the past? Got one, no one else, great. Who wants to start? Yeah, so like, you know, when you usually ask people, like even I say like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd like to start, that would be cool. I know who my family is, my family members, who they were, but you kind of want to get a better idea of like where exactly they came from, what their story was. And finally, if you haven't started already, how come? And usually when I ask that question, it's because people don't know where to start. And that idea of doing research, if you have been out of school for a little while, or you're just like, I, I wasn't great at school, I wasn't the best student, so doing research scares me, that's fine. That's what the library is for. So, beginning research, kind of a um, bit of context. A lot of my slides have comic book people and other superheroes. I'm a big nerd and including that in my PowerPoints is really fun to me. So, this guy, this big green guy, the Incredible Hulk, right? He's always angry, he's upset. Um, everything makes him angry. And that's typically how some people, when they walk into the library, they're like, it's not my first thing that I want to do is go to the library to do research. It's, it's intimidating, it makes me upset. I don't want you to be like this guy. I want you to look like the Hulk that looks like a hipster in broken glasses and wears a cool sweater and that, and he's smiling and he looks smart, he's intelligent. Like that's the Hulk that I want you to be. I want you to be Bruce Banner, not the Hulk, as cool as the Hulk is. So 
that's kind of my fun little way of looking at research through someone else's eyes. Because I personally like research. I don't like having to pre put all of the stuff together, but I love helping people do that search, kind of like that thrill of the hunt kind of thing. So to give a little bit of context uh, about the library, if you haven't driven by, walked by the library, this is what we look like. This is our front, this is a front door really, uh, 104 North Main Street, right across the street from Santander, close to the Y, it's usually the landmark that I give people. And this library, to make a long story short, was built in 1899. We just hit our 120 year birthday slash anniversary uh, back at the end of March. So that was very exciting. Like I said before, we're located at 104 North Main Street. There is parking uh, available behind the library uh, off of the Elm Street entrance. Uh, it's first come, first serve for patrons. There is also on street parking. Uh, you got to pay for, you know, pay the meter 25 cents. We are open uh, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Thursday. So if you ever need to make an emergency stop to the library, we are there. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays, we're open 9 to 5. Uh, during the summer, we are closed on Saturdays. Uh, but we still, we continue to be open on Fridays, 9 to 5. And then after uh, Labor Day, we will begin to be open again on Saturdays. So we will be open Fridays and Saturdays, 9 to 5. Our online resources are available 24-7 on our website, fallriverlibrary.org. So it should not be public library, it should just be library.org. And all of our online resources, our databases, if you're looking for a book in the catalog, library resources are available 24-7 all the time online. And if you need to get in touch with us over the phone, our phone number is 508-324-2700. So, kind of the meat of the presentation here. I said before, I work in the reference department. So up in the reference department, going down one after the other, what do we offer for genealogy resources if you're getting into it for the first time? We offer uh, the Herald News uh, in all of its iterations through 1861 to 2019 on microfilm, little reels of film that we put into a machine and you go through it as you want to. All of our online resources um, about uh, newspapers, including the Herald News, I will be going into those a little further after this slide. We offer city directories from 1853 to 2019. If you are looking for where your ancestors lived in the city, you can, if, as long as you know their name, you can search by their last name. It'll come up with where they lived at the year of the publication you're looking at. Our vital records collection is on microfiche. We have 18, 1803 to 1889. Not too many people look for those years, but if you have, if you kind of know where your ancestors were at that time, you can uh, look through our microfiche. Our church records are a little mis misleading. I'll go into those in a little bit. We offer marriage and baptism. It's more of like a big list um, rather than the actual like records that people look for. But that's another resource we offer. We offer uh, genealogy books that uh, most of them can be checked out uh, with your library card. Um, some of them cannot, but you're more than welcome to flip through uh, the books for uh, if you're getting into genealogy for the first time, it's a good place to start. And our local history books about Fall River, uh, textile industry, the history of Fall River, uh, migrant history, all those topics are included in our Fall River room, which we'll be getting into a little later on in the presentation. 
So getting into the Fall River newspapers, our collection includes over 150 years of publications that we have been able, we've been lucky enough to uh, be able to put on microfilm. I don't, can't think of too many uh, libraries our size that are able to say that we have the collection that we do. Uh, why do people look for obituaries to assist their genealogy pro, uh, research? Obituaries are really good write-ups where they say where a person was from, how you know, where did they live, uh, what what was their occupation, their interests. So it's a really good way to get a uh, kind of a broad picture of what someone's life was or might have looked like. And it also lists the surviving members as well that you can, you know, if you don't know who their aunt was or vice versa, you know, go down the line, you can find all that information in obituary. So if you don't know the survivors, you can find it that way. I really like this particular picture um, of the Herald News. It was from March 23rd, I believe, 1899. If you look here, uh, this was the day that the library uh, opened to the public. So where we are now in 1899, this was uh, opening day for us, and that was a really cool find, I thought. Our online resources for genealogy, uh, the library has a subscription to Ancestry.com. It's the library edition. What that means is you have free access to it in the library. Unfortunately, our agreement with Ancestry for access, um, no remote access at home. You have to be in the library on any of our computers. Uh, it's not just one computer that's dedicated. Any of the computers within the library, uh, in the children's room, uh, the computer lab on the main level, and of course, in the reference room, you have access to it. With, uh, with our internet. You can also, if the South Branch is more your speed, you can go to the South Branch on Arch Street. Uh, there, they have internet access over there as well. So both library branches have access. Oh, it's not right. There's another online resource that we offer. We offer, um, it's supposed to show up, but it's in a different format than what I originally made the PowerPoint in. So we offer newsbank.com as well. That offers newspapers from 1999 to 2019. And it's not exactly like a, like an actual picture that you see as if you were looking at it on microfilm. Um, those are more, it actually kind of looks like it was typed up on a computer. It's really easy to read. Um, it is keyword searchable. What that means is if you know who you're looking for or the article, like the title or the subject, you can search for it so you're not going through record after record after record looking for whatever it is you're looking for. And we also, this is a new resource that we subscribe to. It's called America. America's Historic Newspapers. It's a news bank uh, res uh, resource as well. And that has over 150 um, Massachusetts, not just Massachusetts um, newspapers, it's newspapers from all across the country that date back to like the 1700s to you know, more modern, up to date. Um, there are over 150 Massachusetts newspapers that have been included in this online resource. The Herald News is not one of those, unfortunately, but there are um, a, a lot of other publications that are included in Massachusetts. So that's really cool to just kind of like sit down and look at as well, even if you don't have family in uh, Cambridge or Boston or anything like that. It's really fun to look at it and see what their um, news stories looked like. 
We also offer an obituary index online uh, through, our, uh, through our website. It is an alphabetized uh, index that goes from 1937 to 2011. This is an ongoing project that myself and my staff work on um, daily. And if, this is a great resource if you don't quite know exactly when one of your ancestors passed away. If you know the year, that's super. So say I know my grandfather passed away, uh, well, great grandfather passed away in 1948. Throw that out there. I don't know the month, and I don't know the day. I know his last name, and I know his name. If you go on to the index, this is what it looks like um, on our website after you click. There's a link on the top of, the, of our website that says obituary index. You click that, and this is what you are treated with. So say 1948, okay. So there is 1948. You click that and it will open up the index in an Excel sheet that you can look at on your computer. And you look alphabetically by the last name. Oh look, there's, there's my great grandfather. So you can take that and double check in the uh, Fall River Herald issue where the uh, obituary should be. This you have access to in the library, at your house, uh, whenever, wherever. It's available 24-7, and we are always adding more years. So as you can see, the 19, 1937 was the last one, the newest one that we put up. So we do want to, at some point, have every year on there. And we're concentrating more on um, you know, things that were before 2010. So there are some gaps that we haven't filled yet, but uh, fingers crossed we will uh, be at that point where there's no gaps and it's inclusive. Sir? I'm curious, when you click on, say, like 1944 yes. and you find your ancestor, um, if available, is there a photograph? Or if, if there's not one, could I bring one in and put it up for future genealogists? So that's a great question. The index is just, just an index. So that's it's kind of just a place to jump on, like jump from where you're like, I don't know when they died. I don't know when the obituary was, po was published, posted. And from there, um, if there is a photo, it's kind of like luck of the draw, like if the obituary included one. We do not. We have never had anybody offer um, to kind of gift slash donate um, photos of their ancestors, but um, that would be something that we would have to look into yeah. for sure. For example, I have a great uncle on my mother's side. He was killed in World War II in 1944. Yeah. And I know they have, you know, his, he was in the forward health field, the obituary. Uh -huh. But I also have a couple of photos too that, you know, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. We'll have to think of that. Our next resource that we see genealogists or people interested in finding their ancestors are our city directories. As I said before, we hold directories from 1953 till today. Uh, every year we get a new edition of whatever that year. So in 2020, we'll be getting the 2020 directories and we'll keep on getting them forever and ever, hopefully. The directories are useful for uh, narrowing down where your family members lived. And even if you don't know where they lived, you know their name, you can kind of go down and uh, kind of process of elimination, you can deduce where they lived. It also lists occupations of people who are listed. It's more of like a broad, so if someone, it's a broad kind of 
classification of what someone did. So if someone worked in the mill, it's, going, it's just going to say like laborer or something like that. Um, sometimes it gave, it gives like, um, you know, manager of, you know, stuff like that. But um, by and large, it's mostly a broad picture of what someone's occupation would have been. One of my personal favorite parts of the um, directories is it has all of the uh, advertisements from that for businesses of that year. Sometimes I have people who like, oh, my grandfather worked at the hood factory. Um, you know, is, are there any advertisements um, of it from that year? And more often than not, there are, and you can see where uh, a factory or uh, a mill was like at that time. That's really cool as well. Our marriage and baptism listing slash records, a lot of people look for the records of where their family members were baptized, where they were married. We're lucky enough to have a listing of some Catholic church listings of marriages and baptisms of Catholic churches in Fall River. For our baptisms, we have Notre Dame from 1894 to 2001. We have St. Anne's from 1869 till 1996. And for marriages, we have Blessed Sacrament 1892 to 1995, St. Matthew's from 1888 to 1986, Notre Dame from 1874 till 2001, St. Anne's, 1869 to 1996, and Jean-Baptiste, 1901 to 1996. To go from this on to another, I'm trying to think of the word. It'll come to me. Similar to like marriage records, baptisms, some people look for uh, where their ancestors were buried. That's kind of uh, looking for a, a needle in a haystack, but there is a really cool resource online for free called Find a Grave, and you punch in your family member's name, and if someone has taken a picture of the uh, grave site, sometimes they'll post a picture, and that'll give you a little information as well. Uh, death year, birth year, it's kind of interesting to see where and at what um, cemetery someone was buried at. It's interesting that we have these records or listings because not many libraries have information like that. Um, I've been told the first time I did a presentation like this here, I was told it's like, that's incredibly rare. I guess the Catholic Church kind of keeps records like this kind of like close to the chest. I don't know why, and I don't know where these records came from either. When I came on board at the library two years ago, they were already there. So I don't know if someone was doing research and they gifted it to us or where exactly it came from or what the story is behind these records, but they are they're available for you to look at. This is a picture of our Fall River Room, which is where we keep our uh, local history uh, books in our collection, as well as some other cool resources that you, people can look at. Uh, topics of the books that are shelved in this room include Fall River history, history of the textile industry, immigration and migrant history, church history, and um, kind of like some surrounding areas as well, like Somerset, Dighton, Swansea, New Bedford, Westport. So if you have other, if you're interested in the history of other towns or cities, this is a good place to go to as well. A lot of these books in the Fall River Room are not, you're not able to check them out on your library card because a lot of them are uh, 
first editions or they were never published again, but you are more than welcome to uh, read them in the library and do any of your um, genealogy work in the Fall River Room. We only ask that you uh, come to the reference room to ask to be let in. It is, um, it's locked more often than not, but if you ask, we will gladly let you in there. We have maps of Fall River through the late 19th century till about the mid 20th century. I think our last, our most recent map is from 1958. So if you want to see wards or anything like that, we do have the maps that have the wards on them as well. So to do a capstone of, to cap off what we've done today, I wanted to devote a little bit of time to tell you ladies and gentlemen what's coming next for the reference department. And our next step is something that I've been looking into and what the library has been looking into and seeing what other libraries have been doing is digitizing our uh, newspaper collection from microfilm and have it uh, readily accessible to our patrons online. Uh, we were approached by newspapers.com to digitize our, uh, a good chunk of our um, newspaper collection and have, and have it online. Due to copyright and um, digital access laws and all that fun stuff, we will be able to, with no questions asked, digitized, digitize our newspaper collection from 1861 till about 1923. It's like the cutoff is 1924, but we're going to go till 1923, 1924, kind of in that, that year cutoff. This includes not only the Herald News, but um, also a couple of the other iterations that the Herald was in before it was the, the Herald News that we know today. So the Daily Globe, the Daily Herald, those publications, as long as they fall in this 60-ish year time frame, they'll be online. From my understanding, they will only be accessible through the library, um, it, kind of like how our Ancestry.com uh, membership works. You have access to it as long as you're in the library. Um, no remote access just yet. I don't know if that'll be something that they will offer at some point, but I have my fingers crossed that they will. And to, I wanted to let you all know that I will be coming back to Heritage Park on August 7th for my history, brief history of the Fall River Public Library uh, presentation. That's one that I'm looking, uh, extremely looking forward to because it is, it's personal and uh, we hit our 120 year birthday in March. So we'll have a lot of information and fun stuff for you guys to uh, take a look at. They might not have known about the library. And I want to thank you all for coming to the presentation today. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like the I like crowds, but small crowd. A small crowd is good too. It's fun. Does anybody have any questions? We can answer as many or as few as you would like. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. Uh, you, you've seen me do that, you know, my genealogy yeah. use of the microphones. Yeah. But yes, depending on certain years, like well, two years ago I did a, I was doing a project on the, you know, the demolition of the old city hall. Yes. And so looking up like December or November of 1962, yeah. I could tell I was definitely not the only one that was looking for that particular yeah. issue. Some of the wrong stuff, you can see that they're all scratched. Right? Oh, yeah. It is. And some of those microphones got to be 40, 50. Mm -hmm. at least the machines themselves. And it's, it, it is good that they're digitizing yeah. because it's, the, the microphones are not going to last forever. It has to be done. 
Um, it's, an, it's one of those things that's in, it's inevitable. And just to really stay, in my opinion, for us to stay um, relevant, that's the next step. That's the logical step. And it's only one of those things, it's one of those things that has to happen. And because it has to happen, there's a price tag on it. Uh, where I wish I knew about this newspapers.com program because it's super duper. Um, yeah, they're, they're super nice. It's convenient. We can do it on our, on our time. And you know, we, I would like to have every, I'd like to have a significant portion of the uh, collection done by, by the end of the year, definitely. So kind of in, what month is it? July. So five to six months, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be it'll be it'll be awesome because a lot of other libraries are doing that. Uh, they're not only doing their newspapers, but they're doing uh, high school high school yearbooks. I know um, Somerset just did that. Oh, did they? Yeah, like last last year. One of the few probably the only one that I've seen was you know luckily out from Derby. And those are on those are online. And, and up till now, the, 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 you just mentioned some of yeah. that was the only yeah. place. Here. And yeah. I know a lot of people say because my brother he went to Diamond. Okay. He has his yearbook. Right. The, the, the other years that he would love to things away. Of course. Because on my father's side of the family, there were five boys and they okay. all went to Diamond. So it's like it's cool to find my in my father's yearbook picture and, and my uncle's one. That'd be great. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun to see kind of how this. Uh... It's, it, it, it's tough. I mean, we're fortunate that as I'm a member of the Forward Historical Society, so I get access to the archives. So we have a lot of the same stuff, and that's why I was telling you. Yeah. You should get in there because it's gonna be a great bridge for you know, whatever project you're working oh, yeah. on. And because sure. uh, we have all the directors, but we don't have all the uh, 2019 like you <laughs> have to. I think the, the newest one that we have maybe 2011. Okay. But we do have just about every one of them going back to 1853. Mm. Yeah. One or two that might be missing. Right, right. But yeah, then, uh, the, I mean, those things are about the information just like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people don't know that we, we kind of like collective, we uh, have a resource like that. Mm. You know, so kind of people walk in, they're like, what's here? You know, that's why I come out and I always do this. Like the museum passes, you know. You know, we're always, the museum passes are always going, but um, yeah, it's like, you know, more people, you know. More people have to know. So that's the one thing, too, I think a lot of people, like you were saying, too, people are intimidated by going in because it's like, you s it's a lot cleaner now because a lot of things are digitized. So yeah. I can remember going to the library when I was a kid and even the reference room and everything else. I mean, it was like stacks, stacks yeah. of books, and it's like, yeah, that's when walking well, and go, oh my God, yeah, you have you know, you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Whereas now everything's getting digitized, all right? All put in the back room, so the room's a lot less cluttered, right? So it seems a lot easier. It's like, you know, now I just go in, I ask you or or your colleagues, it's like, you know, what do you have? Or, you know, right. You know, and then you have the directories and whatnot. Yeah, and, yeah. and, um, and everything's online. Yeah, when you you know if you're not quite used to doing research and you know you all oh, go to the library and then you, you go there and you see this you see this behemoth staring at you from the street you're like yeah it's like it looks like Fort Knox you know and it might people might not want to like oh my god you know and you walk in it's marble and you're like I'm gonna break something you know wrap wrap me in a uh, bubble tape you know bubble wrap but um yeah it's all I personally love the just, just you know, look at the art. Oh yeah, every everyone. The, the interior is much greater than the outside. People don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, we're really lucky. Uh, you know, the commu you know, us as a community, and we're lucky to have a beautiful building like that. You know. Also, if they have um, field trips like during the year, they have kids that they bring in. Or if they still do, I mean, not, not, I'm showing my age here, bookmobiles. <laughs> yeah, no more bookmobile, but um, this is a secret kept between one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six of us. Uh, we're, hoping, we're hoping to um, 
have a bookmobile in the future. So yeah. that'll be fun. That, that's how I first got the yeah. idea. Is to go back when I was in the youth school. Again, hopefully, is to show what's going yeah. right in the schoolyard. Yeah. And that was back in the early 70s for me. And uh, yeah, and check in, and then mm -hmm. after that, was just a kind yeah. of on the parents, or if they had programs like that you guys do. Right. Know. That's how you find out. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's, you didn't make it easy to use the book. It's, once you get in there, it's very easy to use. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, we have. We have uh, in community members, you know, of all ages. You know, from from babies till older, and you know, kind of that whole. We run the gamut of our community members who use the library. So, and they lo we're loved, which is we're very thankful for that. So, I don't think there's too many people who leave the library with a with a frown, or they're upset. Maybe they're upset because they don't want to go. You know, like a kid, you know, it's like, no, I want to stay. You know, they're just not into the subject that they're, they're right. from. Right. Yeah. Support, but, yeah. But no, no, it, 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 it is a cool place. I like the programs that they provide. And definitely with the uh, genealogy they get. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah. It's the popular thing, especially with... Um, it, it, yeah, it's especially now you see an ancestry oh. all, all day long on TV. So, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, you need foolish not to have that right. available you know, in there. So much that going to continue on. Yeah. Has anyone here uh, done the the 23 in me, like the, the spit, like you spit in the tube and you, you send it off and you, in a couple, yeah, it's a DNA test. Uh, that's really, really popular. Super, oh my goodness, super popular. I just bought it for my parents uh, for Christmas and uh, they loved it. It's really, um, probably find out a little too much. Um, kind of my mom's personal um, experience with it is she went her, she went 59 years of her life being told and assuming that she was French Canadian and, uh, and Lebanese. And she sends her, she's like, oh, I know, I'm, you know, I know what I'm going to be. And I, I gifted it for my mother and my dad. And my dad, his came back and it was like, oh yeah, Italian and Portuguese, okay. That's what I knew. He's like, he, he knew that. That's what he's always told. And it comes back and he's like, 80% Italian and whatever percent, you know, like 60 40. You know, 60% Italian, 40% Portuguese. And my mom gets hers. And she opens her, you know, she gets the results. And she's like, holy crap, I'm like 25% Portuguese. And it's like, whoa, like, you never knew that. You know, she goes, mom, what the hell? She's like, I don't know, you know. Uh, there's some mysteries, mystery people in our family, personally, so that's probably where that came from, but you, you never know, you know, or you're, that, you're like, oh my God, am I adopted? You know, so like that kind of like, you learn too much, but um, it's fun. And with people, more and more people doing those um, DNA tests, you're like, wow, like, how did this happen? You know, how did we come from uh, Lebanon to New Bedford, you know, or like, or Canada, and how did we come from Canada to here? You know, you kind of try to fill in the gaps. And that's what a lot of people come to us for is that, like, that gray area of not knowing your story. And that's where it's fun. That's where it's the most fun, you know? When you know there's, there's something there, but you're like, ah, how do I get at it? It's like a, Indiana Jones trap, you need to, you know, grab it and replace it with something else. It's like that. Yes? Yeah, what did you do that? What did I do that? What's this? The what? What did I do that DNA? Oh, the DNA? You can, so it's a, it's a kit. Um, you can buy it at like Target, I think now, um, Walmart. I think it's, it's like a hundred, it's 99 bucks. Um, wait until, the pro tip, wait until like Black Friday, like in November. Um, I bought my parents, I bought their kit online for 60 bucks each. So I got the whole thing for them for like 120. So wait until the holidays. And um, yeah, they do. And within a couple days, you get this box and you open it and it's a little gross. 
they give you this little vial. You know, it looks like, you know, kind of like when you get blood taken. It's a little longer than that. And there's a little thing on the top and you spit in it until it gets to a line. So you have this really disgusting <laughs> little bottle of your spit and you, they give you a, um, a prepaid box with a, with a label and you put your spit, <laughs> you put your, it's so gross, uh, you put your spit file in the, uh, in the box and you send it off to this company and in a couple, I think my parents got their results in like, yeah, like a couple weeks to a month. Yeah, and it's really cool. I don't know how it works, and I don't think I want to know how it works, but yeah, it's like, you know, don't ask how the sausage is made kind of thing, you know? It's yucky. Right, yeah, you know, you go back far enough, you're going to find some into marriage. Right. Oh, yeah. Especially depending on how far, you know, how far back your family is. So, right here in Fall River, Twenty to twenty-five, at least different, you know, right. countries. You know, yeah. Because that's the great thing about the city is, you know, we really are a number of cities. Because yeah. all the tech towns. Yep. Yeah. Especially after the Civil War, it wasn't. It wasn't the Fordans, the Bradens, and the Durkees that were. Right. You know, it was actually the mill owners' wives, in some cases, mm -hmm. were working on the looms. Right. But then afterwards, with the expansion, it's like that's what we need to do with yeah. labor. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We have a cool story. So, yeah, that's what mine's weekend was in the late 1800s. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and my, my cousin in Baltimore, I mean, she kind of, you know, she looked it up and it goes all the way back to the 1600s. Wow. It goes to Montreal. Yeah. You know, we got access to that. Yeah. Helped start in Montreal mm -hmm. and all yeah. the whole family. My father's side of the family, they, they, you know, they were from English, from England. And like a lot of, I mean, the French, that's where the whole French Canadian name, so to speak, comes from. Because many people went from Europe first to Canada oh, yeah. to try to find work, but they couldn't. But our textile plants here, not just Florida, but Lawrence, all, all the textile cities, we were dying for labor. And so Canada was like, well, we're down in New England, you know, you have plenty of jobs. Right. They were glorious jobs when they found out about them, but you know, they just had you know, wages at that time. Right. Well, that's very well. That's very well. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, just from the city directors, I found out probably my, my, forget my father's side of the family, so many of them worked at Cornell. Okay. Yeah. And which explains why, for the majority, my father said they've always been in that pleasant street. Yeah. Uh, right there. Yeah. In that day, but it, yeah. it just puts the poles together. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or their own genealogy stories? Finding out your family? Not yet. That's fun. I never knew I had Portuguese until I started researching. Okay. And I found out Henry the Navigator's his sister's my 16th great grandmother. No way. Oh wow! See, that's crazy. Like I love hearing those because when you when you see the um, the ancestry.com, the um, kind of like the commercials or the testimonials, you know, stuff like that is like one in a million. Like you find out your 16th grandmother is it was a sister of Henry the Navigator, and that's so that's so cool. You know, I don't get to hear that too often. You know, and that's cool. So at least now every time you drive up, twelve. And I find all of my best friends I'm related to work when you go back to the 1600s. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah, we're all in some way, way, shape, or form. Yeah, no. Very cool. A, li a little uh, getting kind of off subject, but the, but the actual the, the statue of the uh, of Prince Henry. Uh, do you know where the base came from? I've read about it, but I forget. It came from the original post office, the old granite one. Oh, that yeah. was on <laughs> the, main, the main entries had the arches, and it was the support. So there was about three or four of them with the granite bases, and there's two others at least, two of the bases that were turned into monuments uh, throughout the city. But that was one of them. That's awesome. 
That's cool. Cool, cool. cool. And you went to got Italian uh, and you write it down. Ah. Now, did you ever find any previous or really distant relatives?